Welcome back to another A-Level Maths Revision video. Today we're taking a look at the chain rule. So basically we're moving on to further differentiation here and I'm kind of taking a introduction step into the chain rule. Um, and basically this is kind of the foundation of all your further differentiation. So in here I will be differentiating stuff like cos and ln, but overall I'm starting with the chain rule because it's kind of the foundation of it and this is how I learned it back um, when I did my A-Levels and such. So, Let's walk through these questions. Um, there's four questions in this video, and truthfully, only one of them is actually from the Pure Maths Year 2 textbook, only because there's not too many questions for it um, which don't involve something like the quotient rule, for example. So I've just primarily picked in this video questions that are only chain rule. So no quotient rule, no product rule, just chain rule. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. So the first question comes from one of the old C3 exams, so January 2013 question one. So we're given a curve C here and it has the given equation. So we're given the coordinates w minus 32. So the part A just wants us to find um, the value of w. So how would we do that? Well we're given y which is minus 32 and we have the equation. So if we've got y, we've got minus, uh, sorry we've got y, we've got the equation as a result we can work out um, what w will be. So, 2x minus 3 to the power of 5, this has to be equal to minus 32, okay? So, how do we go from 2x minus 3 uh, to the power of 5 to just 2x minus 3? Well, I've got to take the fifth root, right? So, taking the fifth root here, that'll just give us 2x minus 3. Because remember, we just want to solve for x. So, 2x minus 3. That's going to be equal to the fifth root of minus 32. Now remember, don't worry about the fact that this is minus, because it's an odd power. You can do this, and it will just give you an, uh, a negative answer. So what would be the fifth root of 32? That would just be 2. So my answer here would just be minus 2. So what we have here is 2x minus 3 is equal to minus 2. So how do I solve this? I'll just add 3 to both sides. So 2x going to be equal to 1, so therefore x will be equal to a half. But my x here in this case is w, so w is equal to a half. Okay, so a nice easy two marks to get started there. The real kind of uh, build up to the question begins now in part b, where we're going to actually differentiate this. So we've got w, let's have a go at this one. So part b here. So, we're told um, that the equation of the tangent C at the point P, um, oh, well, sorry, we're asked to find the equation of the tangent to C at the point P. So remember P is a half, that's W, minus 32. Now, if you couldn't actually work out W, just write down whatever you get here and still have a good differentiating it. You will still get method marks, for example, on a question like this. Obviously, your final answer isn't going to be correct because you didn't get W. But even if you got it wrong, the UW, but you still had a good differentiation, you're still going to get, you know, maybe two method marks there. So it's always worth having a go at. So let's have a go at it together, see if we can get there. So we've got the point P. So what I'm going to do is differentiate Y. So if Y is 2X minus 3 to the power of 5, we want to differentiate this. So dy by dx. So, how do we differentiate this here? Because we've got 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. Now, clearly, we're not going to sit here expanding all those brackets. So, we need a little shortcut to get us there. And this is how the shortcut works for the chain rule. So, what you do is you take your power and bring it to the front as a product. So, what I've got here technically is 5 times, now it'd be 5 times 2x minus 3 at the moment. But we just write, for now, I'm just going to write a little time symbol. And I'm going to write my bracket here. We're going to also times by something else. First, I'm just going to write my bracket out again. 2x minus 3 to the power. Now here, just like we would with normal differentiation, reduce your power by 1. So 5 minus 1, that's 4. And then this here, this final thing we've got to multiply by, how do we obtain that? Well, all we do is differentiate this part here. So what's the differential of 2x minus 3? That's just 2, right? we have at the front 5 times 2 times 2x minus 3 to the power of 4. 
So all you've got to do here is just simplify. 5 times 2 is 10. So my final answer is 10 times 2x minus 3 to the power of 4. So that's dy by dx. That's my differential. But obviously, we're not quite finished here. We need to write down the equation of the tangent to see at this point here. So dy by dx. Now, this question is so big, I don't really have much room. But let's keep working through it. So remember, the differential dy by dx allows us to work out the gradient at a given point. So if we've got this point p here with an x-coordinate of a half, we can sub it into here. So uh, when x is a half, what do we get? Well, dy by dx is just simply going to give us 10 times 2 times a half is just 1. So that's 1 minus 3, so that's minus 2 to the 4. If you do minus 2 to the 4, that will be 16. So 10 times 16 will give us 160, right? Now, you've got a calculator. Just put all this in on your calculator. You don't have to say it by doing it by hand. Um, but just so you're right, you get 160. Now we've got the different uh, the gradient here, 160. Now all I've got to do is use my equation of a straight line, given my point. So remember, if I let me just quickly clear it all first. So we erase all the ink. So m is 160. So we don't need the you know the negative reciprocal of this. Um, we're just working out the equation of the tangent rather than the normal. So all I do now is plug this into my equation of a straight line. So y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x minus x1. Well, m is just your gradient, right? So y minus y1. So my y1 is minus 32. So minus minus 32. I'll become plus 32 like so. Okay. So just be very careful for that. It's very easy to make a mistake there. M is 160 times x minus x1. And remember my x1 here is a half. So minus a half there. Like so. So, so far everything looks good. All we've got to do now is just simplify, clean everything up, and get it in the form we need. So, y plus 32, won't do anything just yet with that side. Expand the bracket here, so that's 160x minus 80, like so. And then, to get it in the form here, y equals mx plus c, all I've got to do is subtract 32 off. So, y is equal to 160x minus 80 minus 32. Do that on your calculator, I'll do it by hand and you should get minus 112 there. So there we have it, so y is equal to 160x minus 112. Five marks for all that. Um, so just take your time, be very careful with minuses, very easy to trip up um, on these style of questions with negative signs. Another kind of similar question here, um, not quite as much work, um, but you know, exact same method basically. So we're given y, so that's one plus ln 4x to the power of 3 over 2. So that's 3 over 2. And it wants us to find the value of dy by dx at x equals um, e to the power of 3 over 4, basically. So basically, it's, it's very identical to the last question. We just don't need to finish off um, like the tangent, basically. So let's differentiate here. So what's dy by dx? Well, differentiate this here now. Again, we need chain rule because we have this power, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that to the front just like we did before. So that's 3 over 2 times, okay? So we're going to times it by something we just don't know what yet. Remember, that's something we get from the differential of the inside of the bracket, but we'll just leave that for now. Let's just write our bracket again. So 1 plus ln 4x. Your power, remember, you just subtract 1 off. So this is 1.5 minus 1, so we get a half. And then this something here, this um, term that we get, remember we get that from the differential of my inside of my bracket. Differentiate 1, that's just 0. The differential of ln 4x, careful this isn't 4 over x, but 1 over x. Okay, So just be very careful there. So now, it's 3 over 2 times 1 over x. All we're going to do is just start simplifying here. So this will give me 3 over 2x times 1 plus ln 4x. At this stage here, if you you know if you prefer it like that, you can write this as the square root of 1 plus 4, uh, ln 4x. Completely up to you. 
Um, I'm going to keep everything in index notation for now, um, just because you can put all this in any calculator if you really want anyway. So I wouldn't um, worry about it too much, but we will actually get an exact answer for this one. Here now, what we need to do is use the fact that x is e cubed over 4. Okay, so when x is equal to e cubed over 4, what's dy by dx? So what's the value of the gradient? So dy by dx, well that's going to be equal to 3 divided by 2 lots of e cubed over 4 times by 1 plus ln 4 lots of this. Well, if you've got 4 lots of e cubed over 4, they just cancel right so we just get left with e cubed so ln e cubed and it's all raised to the power of a half okay so everything looks good so far here now what i'm going to do is start simplifying so this three divided by two lots of e cubed over four that two will cancel here and i'll just get left with a denominator of two so what i've got now if we just erase this bit over here so we just uh, carry on next to this. This is 3 over e cubed over 2. And obviously I can simplify this again in a second. Times by, remember, ln e cubed, this ln e essentially cancels. Okay, And using the power rule, we can bring that to the front. So this is 3 ln e, which would just give us 3. So what I've got here is 1 plus 3. Now, if you're unsure about this, remember you've got a calculator, so don't be you know, sweating out in the exam trying to work things out by hand. It can save you a bit of time, but pl plugging this into your calculator shouldn't take too much time. Plug it in, and what you should get here is just 3. This is to the power of a half. So what I've got now is take my 2 on top, so 3 times 2 is 6, divided by e cubed. So that's 6 over e cubed, times by the square root of 1 plus 3, which is 4. So times by 2. So what I had to get here for my final answer is 12 over e cubed. Or you can write this as 12e to the minus 3. Okay? That will give us the exact value. Um, it doesn't ask for the exact value, so you could give it as a numerical solution if you'd like. Um, but yeah, there you go. So five nights for that. Um, so just being careful with you know your rules of logarithms and such, um, but I won't say anything too tricky there. Now for this question here, I'm going to omit part A, and the reason for that is because it involves product rules. So it's two functions: it's x cubed and one two x. So we ain't doing that one for this video anyway. So we're doing part B here. So y is equal to x plus sine two x cubed. Differentiating this, dy by the x. Well, we're applying product rule because it's x plus sine two x times x plus sine two x times x plus sine two x. So, make life easier. We just apply chain rule. So I take my three to the front. So that's three. We're going to times it by something else. So before we write that down, uh, we'll just go back to our bracket like we normally do. Uh, now I'm going to leave a bit of a bigger space here, and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, so this will just be x plus sine 2x Subtract 1 off the power so 3 minus 1 gives us a power of 2 now What students usually do once they've kind of got the basis of this they'll start doing this bit here um, Once they've got done the freedom and you'll see why now and the reason for that is because we need to differentiate this expression here Okay, so differentiating this differential of x is 1 so this is going to be 3 times 1. What's the differential of sine 2x? Well, the differential of sine x is cos x, so this is going to be 2 cos 2x here, so just be very careful. So 1 plus 2 cos 2x, like so. So that's the only reason why I'm, I left a bigger space there, because I already knew it was going to be a big bracket like that. Um, but you know, don't worry too much if you accidentally don't have enough room, you just write your solution out again. So just leave my answer kind of as it is here. I don't have to simplify any further. I've got 3 bracket 1 plus 2 cos 2x times x plus sine 2x. So my writing's really scruffy today. Squared like so. 
Okay, you don't have to do anything further with it. Um, you can just literally be on to add snap. So again, that was from an old Edexcel uh, C3 paper. So that question would have been about three marks, I'd assume. Um, three marks for the first one, three marks for that one as well. And finally, moving on to the last question here. Very similar to the second one we did. Um, we're given a function or an equation here, y equals um, 1 plus e to the 2x to the power of 3 over 2. And we have to find the value of dy by dx. Uh, x equals a half ln 3. So let's write it out like we do. What I'm going to do now is differentiate. So dy by dx. What will that give us? Take your power down to the front. That's going to be 3 over 2. What I'll do now is I'll do an example where I just bring you know the, the thing out to the front as well here. So what do we times it by? Well, differential of 1 is 0. Differential of e to the 2x. Well, that'll give us 2e to the 2x. Like so. Bracket. 1 plus e to the 2x. And remember here, subtract 1 off your power, so that's going to be a power of a half. So here now, all we're going to do is just start simplifying and then just sub in our x coordinate. So 3 over 2 times 2, that'll just give us 3. So I get 3e e to the 2x times 1 plus e to the 2x to the power of a half. And then at this stage here now, all I'm going to do is just sub in x. So sub so x equals a half one three. So what will that give us? So the big, like, the bit of magic here that helps with this question is the fact that it's 2x. Well, if x is a half ln 3, these 2x is just going to be ln 3. So this is 3e e to the ln 3 times 1 plus e to the ln 3 again, all to the power of half. And at this stage here, this is just basically number crunch on your calculator. 3e e ln 3. So this e to the ln 3, remember these just cancelled, so all I'm going to get left with is 3. So that's 3 times 3, or 3 squared, times by 1 plus e to the ln 3. So again, that's just 3. So that's 1 plus 3 to the power of a half. So what I've got here is 3 times 3, which is 9, times by the square root of 4. That's the same as 9 times 2 which hopefully you don't need a calculator for, gives you 18 there. So, I don't think you really have to show this step by hand, um, but it's it's you know it's just good habit to get into. Um, you know, it just improves your skill with simplifying expressions and stuff, which always goes a long way for your, your exams. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it's been helpful. Um, any questions, any queries, please just leave them below, guys.